In this episode, we're getting the sonnet running. Microphone check, make it a microphone check. Give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie. I could truly be moody. I could have played the fucking Grinch in the movies. I've been a we took a look at these spark plugs. They're all consistent and they all look kind of black, but they're not made, built up with any um, gunk on them. Let's get these cylinders cleared out. All right, the trunk floor is so bad, I got the battery sitting on a cinder block on the ground. Looks like we have a radio lit up here. Oh shit, <laughs> washers are on, wipers are on. Let's uh, see what happens. No starter. Stupid weather stripping is hanging down in the rad fan, so let's take that off. My dad's here to help me uh, test the plug wires, because I'm not very good with electricity. 0 0.00, so I guess that's uh, zero resistance, right? Let's take number two, which is 0.1009. Great. Got nothing. Nope. The wire in there is so corroded. This is for the coil. Brand spanking new! I suppose you could take one of these. I could sell this thing on eBay. Vintage. Are you keeping track? No, I thought you were. I think we're gonna do it all it over was, again! It was the one we couldn't get at. It was the that disgusting one. one. Yes, that is yeah. the one. So three. Let's mesh one up to three. Move over, buddy. In length. Smart label on this time. Shut up. Nope. I'll let you have this uh, gauge for gap and points. I don't think I've used it since 1974, and I worked on the 63 Corvair ramp side. Anything? Yeah, it's got 12 volts now. Nice. Yep, I got a spark. Sweet. So this is the famous number one spark plug and I got my corn cob pipe. So we're gonna slide that over and show you how difficult it is. Okay. Go. Get your throttle open. Huh? Throttle? Where's that? It's the right pedal. I'll, I'll do it. I thought you were doing it. Okay. I you were gonna do it. Go ahead. We got some uh, stuff coming out, some air coming out the top. It means you got a stuck valve. You think so? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, she is. So I'm going to pull the rocker arm uh, assembly off and see if I can break that um, valve loose. I don't know, that was pretty easy. Got a push rod coming out. Yeah, I see it. So last night we found this giant brass block. I don't know what it's for, probably a building thing. But we're going to try to use this instead of having a brass hammer because I don't have a brass hammer. We use a BFH instead. So the valve is fully compressed now. Plugs are out. Let's start doing this again. Okay. We got the 
Something hitting something. I think it's a piston hitting the drop valve. That valve on cylinder three is pushed down really far. Um, unfortunately, I think I pushed it down a little bit too far, and the the piston actually contacts it when I roll the engine over by hand. So I have uh, two options that I can see. Well, three, but only two that I would actually consider. Um, the first one. is to put a wad of string in the spark plug hole um, until it's kind of filled with, uh, with string and then you roll the engine over by hand and then the piston compresses the string and supposedly pushes the valve up uh, with uh, relatively low chance of bending it. That's something that I'm not totally comfortable with and the second alternative that I'm not really going to try is No string. So uh, it's something that you can do. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to have to replace a valve. The third option is go French Revolution on that stuff. That means that I'm going to pull the heads off. So I think I'm going to have to pull the intake manifold off and then pull the heads off and then I can take a look at what's really going on, take a look at the cylinders, um, all the valves underneath, and I can kind of hopefully tap that valve back in place and get it moving a little bit uh, from the underside instead of just the top. Let me teach you, I could defeat you with two hands tied and have you waking in the hospital like who am I? And who are you? Who are they? What is this? You wouldn't believe us, I'ma react to this shit The mind slips, slips, slipping, speaking in tongues Sly ink, GVA, that's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done Sly ink, GVA, that's how we get it done, uh So we do have a little bit of carbon deposit in here Some deposits in these areas and then uh, let's actually take the gasket off. We have a some crud that's been in these. I think this is, is this coolant. Yep. This must be a coolant passage. So that's good I pulled this off because that wouldn't have cleared itself out. This is cylinders three and four. Here's the stuck valve. things out pretty far. Again, got some carbon in here. Um, doesn't look grotesque to me, but what does look grotesque is this stuff. That's nasty. So, I'm gonna have to get that out of there. And Otherwise, uh, nothing that is super offensive other than the, the coolant, as far as I can tell. Alright, it's been a week, but I've been doing stuff. I got the heads back from the machine shop. They got the valve unstuck. Um, cleaned it all up with the coolant passages. Put a little bit of surfacing on it so, to make sure it's flat. And uh, hardened valve seats in there so I don't have to run lead additive in the gas. Also got them painted. I've got a couple things cleaned up in here. I'm going to take the intake manifold and clean that up a little bit. And I'm going to add the gasket in there and, and paint that up. I got a full set of gaskets for the entire engine. And it was kind of hard to find the head gaskets. So out of four parts stores I called, only one of them had any head gaskets and it came with the whole set. Next step is to clean off the old gaskets and I'll start getting things together. I've been putting hoses on, which is a really boring task obviously, so I spared you that. And We'll try to get this stuff back on.
about to do the valves, I've got Jack from the Minnesota Sob Club. Say hello. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> and he's going to uh, help me do the valves and kind of learn on his sonnet. And I think I'll show you a little picture of that right now. Yo, give it a stage in a minute, I'ma eat you. El Profesor is in the house, let me teach you. I could defeat you with two hands tied and have you waking in the hospital. Like, who am I? And who are you? Who are they? What is this? You would have believed Now it's time to adjust the valves. The manual is not very clear on this, and it's kind of confusing if you haven't done it before. So I'll try to explain how it goes. Uh, so if it's your first time doing it, you'll have an idea of what to expect. First, you need to put the number one cylinder at top dead center between the exhaust and intake strokes. Unless the clamshell has been removed, you'll need someone to watch the valves from the top. Look for the exhaust valve to close just before the intake valve opens. This valve operation is what the manual refers to as rocking. Roll the engine over by hand until you're lined up at zero degrees top dead center on the timing marks. Now for valves 3, 5, 7, and 8, slide a feeler gauge between the rocker arms and tops of the valves. For intake valves, you want 0.014 inches or 0.35 millimeters, and for exhaust valves, go for 0.16 inches or 0.4 millimeters. Turn the lash adjuster screws until you feel some resistance on the gauge without making it tight. Turn the engine over 360 degrees so the valves on cylinder 4 are rocking now. Adjust valves 1, 2, 4, and 6. Turn the engine over again, recheck the first set, then turn it over once more and recheck the second set. You'll also want to recheck your valve lash periodically after driving the car for a while. Now that the valves are adjusted, it's time to time the engine. I've already got the pulley set on the 6 degree before top dead center mark, and that's what the manual specifies. I've also got the distributor. I painted the little disc thing here, and I've marked the number one cylinder on here. The distributor also has a tick mark in the top of the distributor body, so you don't have to mark it yourself if you don't want to. And this should be able to slot in here, and should be pretty close when we get it in. Excellent, it's getting, getting oil. So we already know that we have oil coming to the heads, but or to the valves, but I just see we have 45 pounds oil pressure. I think we figured out what's wrong. Um, I think we got the three and four cylinders mixed up on the uh, distributor cap, so we're gonna give it a go with uh, 1342, not 1432. Since I'm not going to fake this video, uh, the camera stopped recording right as it turned on for the first time, so thank you Canon. Um, so I'm going to go and we're going to start this up for you right now uh, on starting fluid and um, actually run it.
the sonnet runs. I'm super excited. I think it sounds awesome um, as far as it is right now. Next step is to get this thing idling and uh, figure out a cooling system and all that fun stuff. But for right now, I'm going to cut the video off. Uh, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching Duluth Junction Workshop. I'm trying to get this thing on the road before the snow flies, so we'll see if that happens. Nikes. Yo, give it a stage in a minute, I'ma eat you. El Professor is in the house, let me teach you. I could defeat you with two hands tied and have you waking in the hospital like who am I? And